It's the KSO Show with Derek Young and Grant Flanders. We're back again on Friday afternoon. Uh, you might be listening to this on Saturday morning or just, you know, whenever throughout this weekend. But we got together. We decided to record a podcast because new strength and conditioning coach for Kansas State football uh, met the media today, Tremaine Carroll. Um, obviously, that got announced, you know, about a week or a week and a half ago. A week and a half ago, he had to pack everything up. Got to Manhattan recently, sat down with the media, and he was a really great guy to talk to. We also got to speak with uh, Coach Chris Kleiman, you know, and touch base on everything going on, you know, as this is the first week of spring football. So exciting stuff uh, in that avenue of things for us to be able to to keep tabs on as. Of course, basketball is still going on. We'll get into basketball podcasts, you know, after they play Iowa State this weekend, you know, so we can get a good regular season finale podcast wrapped up before the Big 12 tournament that starts next week, and we'll have a preview podcast before that as well. But this podcast, this KSO show, will be based on football uh, pretty much in its entirety because we talked, as I said, to two big pieces um, in this program And uh, the first thing I want you to talk about, D.Y., is your first takeaways, you know, from Tremaine Carroll, your first time being able to see him talk and uh, what his demeanor was like coming into this job Um, and and just your overall feelings for how he sees himself taking this job to the next level. Yeah, he's a confident guy. I mean, he has a really good presence about him, comfortable in his own skin. So someone that is probably, you know, pretty convicted has a lot of conviction in what he's doing, a belief in what he is doing. So I think they're getting someone that's confident, that uh, trusts himself in the job that he's going to do, which, you know, that's that's half the battle most of the time is believing that you can do something because if you don't, then the guys that are listening to you, they're certainly not going to believe it either. And, and that's kind of one of his core philosophies, and we can kind of get into it a little bit, um, and how he connects with his players. That's important to him. Um, he believes just like Chris Kleiman in, in that, you know, he's not going to get much out of them if mm-hmm. they don't trust him, if they don't respect him. So one of the first things he's trying to do at Kansas State is to win that trust and to win that respect from those players. And, and to get respect, you have to respect them. And he's certainly a believer in that. Um, I really liked a, a couple of his things that he said in, in one, when he was talking about that trust. He said you can only push – talk about the players that he, they're going to be under his command you can only push them as far as they trust you which i i, I certainly am am a i guess a believer in that too so mm-hmm. i i really like that that you know you, you know you want you want to be able to push them as far as they can go get them to kind of reach that extra limit then they're going to have to trust you and in, in what you're doing and he talks about putting a lot of deposits in the trust bank and, and yeah that's what it is. It, it's something that accrues over time. You're not going to get go from zero to 100 your first day on the job. It's something that you're going to have to continue to win them over and to earn their respect. And, and I think he's certainly done that in the early going and, and getting into that philosophy. I think one of the, the staples of that, you know, are, are you there to set a standard, to set a culture, or are you there – to maximize performance, and I think something that him and Chris Kleiman both agree on at this point is that he's there to do both. Mm-hmm. You know, you set the standard, you set the culture, you set the mood of the off season when all the, the develop when the most development and the most you know improvement happens. You set it there, but you're also there to maximize performance. You have to use use the science to know when to push them, when not to push them, when it's time to recover, and kind of and and how far to push them and when and all those kinds of things and he'll rely on it he says he's going to you know listen to, he's going to surround himself with experts he's not there to reinvent the wheel he's the, he learns he listens to other experts in the field embraces what they're about um keeps learning always learning and then mm-hmm. adopting what he thinks is right for for the program that he's running and i want to touch on something that coach Kleiman talked about uh Tremaine Carroll and uh ask your thoughts on it just the fact that Carol brings in you know a fresh new look to this this program this university. Obviously, uh, coach even said you know Chris Dawson uh, put great work into a decade of, of of you know a long career at K State. But now something new, something fresh for these guys to get excited about, and that's something that it sounds like from Coach Kleiman and Carol that these guys are excited about a new venture. Yeah, I think everyone gets a new layer of energy and excitement and, and a little bit of a. A boost in morale, just to just a boost because something is unique, different, a little bit fresher, 
And I think that's what they've, they've, they've noticed um, in the transition from Chris Dawson to uh, Tremaine Carroll. Almost forgot his name already. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and I guess, you know, what I am get out of that because i heard carol say that you you heard chris climb say that chris climb said he can he sensed that he, he recognized that mm-hmm. and i guess my conclusion from that is that um there's nothing really wrong with what chris dawson was doing we're not here to run him down but it does seem like um i don't know if it, this is a good way to put it but it's the best way i can describe it maybe that message from him was getting a little stale because he had been there for so long mm-hmm. so uh just needing a different voice in the room um not that uh chris dawson was you know out of his gourd or anything like that uh, or but you know, sometimes people need to change the scenery i mm-hmm. think that might have been the case for chris dawson and i think sometimes a room needs a fresher voice and a, and a fresher face. And I think that might be happening at Kansas State. And I think that's why, you know, so far it's kind of been of a seamless transition and, and a beneficial one and a positive one for Carroll at Kansas State. Carroll has said in his, his, you know, his press conference, introductory press conference, that he's not reinventing the wheel. He's taking, you know, a lot of good things from a number of different People that he's, uh, you know, learned from over the years uh, being a strength and conditioning coach. You know, he's been around the block. He's been at teams as a strength and conditioning coach. So, you know, that's that's major. And But the fact is, um, back to what I, my point was, he's not reinventing the wheel. But he did mention some specifics of how he would like to get his play, what he wants his players to do in the weight room to reflect on the field. So talk about what he had to say about that. Yeah, and I think that we're probably a little bit more specialization there. Um, probably defining uh, the the roles and the plans in terms of in the weight room, conditioning wise, where they want their bodies to be, what how they want them to move. I think they're really going to probably crunch those down position by position and get a little bit more specialization by position um, mm-hmm. instead of just saying, hey, you know, kind of cover up with an entire blanket. So I think you're going to see them really individualize and personalize workouts for guys at certain positions. And and he's going to work with those assistant coaches to say, hey, what do you want? What do you want? What do you need from them? How do you want them to be in terms of movement, um, bulk, strength, weight, all that stuff when they get they figure out what the coaches see as the ideal result, and then he'll put together an individualized plan for for that player. So, and then he's back in the Big Twelve too, right? Mm-hmm. So that that's probably the last thing to touch on when it comes to Tremaine Carroll and his introductory. I guess you want to call it an introductory press conference of sorts. He's already been on the job for almost two weeks, but uh, back in the Big Twelve, he was on the strength and conditioning staff briefly at Oklahoma State before he became a head strength coach at, at the various places that he's been at, which I think included what. SMU, Arkansas, and USF, South mm-hmm. Florida, not Central Florida, South Florida. <laughs> and uh, so he's he's uh, been in the Big 12, um, and he knows some of the coaches already. And, you know, he crossed paths with Van mm-hmm. Malone at SMU, and he cross, crossed paths with Buddy Wyatt at SMU, crossed paths with Jason Ray at Oklahoma State. Um, he played at Oklahoma State, so he's back in the Big 12. Um he did say he'll miss the winters in Florida, right? Um, mm-hmm. uh, doesn't get, doesn't <laughs> get very too. cold there. He's back in Kansas. Got to wear a coat again. Um, yeah, now I would too. And so, but he's back in the Big Twelve. Um, sounds like he really is excited to yeah. uh, raise a family in in Kansas. Uh, he's here for the long haul. He made sure to say that. They said, you know, he's kind of bounced around. Or, are you relieved to, yeah. to be here as long as you can? And he's totally convinced they're going to be in Manhattan for a long time. And that's what's exciting about him. He mentioned, too, in his presser that USF was a great spot for him. It's not like he was leaving something that was a shaky job going to something more stable. It was going from a stable job to an even more stable job here in Manhattan, Kansas. So, yeah, uh, that's exciting for him and his family and for this program, obviously. But we also talked to Coach Kleiman, and he, you know, had a lot of good things to say, little tidbits here and there that yeah. I think we can discuss throughout. But, I mean, first, yeah, what's the first thing you want to mention when it comes to that press conference? Well, yeah, he talked about where Skylar Thompson's status was, and I thought that was a big point of emphasis in, in, during the press conference and mm-hmm. something that we were kind of starting to uncover, starting to grasp, but, but that's his health and status. And we saw that picture, you know, that they put on the social media accounts where it looked like Skylar Thompson was really letting it rip on the first day of spring football practice, 
Kleiman, uh, I guess, clarified his status. He's not going to have any contact whatsoever this spring. Even if he was healthy, I don't think he typically um, – your quarterbacks aren't typically live during the spring anyway, so he probably wouldn't have got a lot of contact at all. But, but I don't think he's going to play a lot of 11-on-11, 11 11, probably more 7-on-7, seven seven, drill work, stuff mm-hmm. of that nature. But that's going to be more than what they were expecting. They were expecting him to really not be able to let it rip, let it fly till the end of April. But they got a bit of good news a couple of weeks ago that he is actually cleared for all normal activity. So they're going not going to push him, but he's going to be able to do far more than what they thought. And Coach even said it, you know, obviously Skyler's going to be the starter day one, yep. but the fact is behind closed doors and everything else, he's still competing for his job, and that's something that Coach even mentioned. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's pretty clear he's the number one guy, but he did talk about behind him and that group behind him. I mean, he mentioned a lot about how Will Howard has experience and stuff, but obviously Jake Rubley, the new hot shot coming in, and still a, a kind of an experienced guy in this team, and Jaron Lewis still in that mm-hmm. same room. Talk about what Kleiman said and your thoughts on that. It sure seemed like, he, I mean, he got pressed a little bit and he kind of waffled. Uh, I wouldn't say waffle. I guess he was trying to answer very <laughs> transparently because um, he was asked, you know, is yeah. Will Howard just a QB2? And, and he really didn't want to say that he was. So I think he really wants this to be an open battle, an open competition between Will Howard and Jake Rubley and Jaron Lewis probably, and mm-hmm. maybe even walk on Max Marsh, as he mentioned as yeah. well. But he did when push came to shove he did say yeah will howard probably is a leg up but that's because he's actually played college football exactly. before and jake rubley has not mm-hmm. so we'll say we'll see what it looks like um towards the end of spring but i thought it was interesting he really didn't want to say that will howard was ahead but in the early going um he is just because of the experience factor and stuff of that nature so and i guess we can move on to some other uh other notes uh that, that Chris Kleiman, I guess, conveyed a little bit. He, we talked about the move from uh, Wayne Jones to linebacker, mm-hmm. and he said, that, you know, that, that was really just because they think he plays better closer to the line of scrimmage than, than away from the line of scrimmage. And maybe that's the reason why he lost his job at safety, because he got hurt and he came back and mm-hmm. um, he didn't get his job back when he returned from injury. So uh, they think he plays better close to the line of scrimmage, so they're going to play him closer to the line of scrimmage uh, running back. He touched on the running backs. Mm-hmm. You know, Deuce is special. He, he said that Deuce Vaughn is special. What else you got there? It, it seemed like Jacardia Wright and, and C.J. Price not really pushing right now. They're they're probably further down the mm-hmm. totem pole, but right behind Deuce seems like a battle between Joe Irvin and Keon Mosey. And if you you know follow what we write on a normal basis at KSO four months, and you probably wouldn't be surprised by that. Yes, Deuce is. The guy in the backfield, he gets used differently, of course, because he's a different kind of back. Yep. But behind Deuce, the battle is going to be between Joe Irvin and Keon Mosey, and I think they really like what they have in both of them. They need Mosey to keep expanding his knowledge and understanding of the playbook. I think mm-hmm. that's what limited him to the role that he had last year during the 2020 season. But Joe Irvin sat out that entire season as one of the opt-outs, but he's back on the roster, back and probably going to be a very important part of the rotation once again. You have to remember, everyone has this, I guess, crush on Jacardia Wright, and I get it, but he's probably further back than Joe Irvin. Mm-hmm. Joe Irvin is a guy that they're going to rely on and trust much more. And if you remember when they were both true freshmen in 2019, Irvin was the guy they went to first, not yeah. Jacardia Wright. They've always liked Irvin just a little bit more than Wright. Irvin was just as good, if not better, than Wright when he played too in that early going, mm-hmm. but he was forced out of the lineup because of con- concussions and other injuries. He was a little banged up that first year that really kept him off the field. He probably could have played enough to where he may not have redshirted that first year in 2019. That's how much they think of Joe Irvin. So that backfield may be a little bit better than, they, than some people think, but I mm-hmm. think it's going to be because of Joe Irvin, not Jacardi at Wright. There's a lot of things we're going to be learning over the next month, obviously, as spring football goes along. It just began, which is exciting. But yes, Kleiman said a bunch of things that we can, you know, convey our, our own thoughts on what he's saying early on and his his kind of feelings of workouts, you know, and how they're going early on. And when it came to the wide receiver group, uh, you know, you got Sebastian Taylor, Malik Knowles, and Phillip Brooks. But after that, he really only mentioned one guy. Wasn't that right, D.Y.? Yeah, th- I mean, that's the trio right there that they'll probably rely on and trust the most. Malik's uh, healthy right now, going through spring ball. Phillip Brooks is healthier than he was. Um, he played really banged up last year. 
in the 2020 season. And Shabaston Taylor is not going to do anything during spring football because he, as he recovers from his knee injury. Mm-hmm. But the next guy they mentioned was Keenan Garber. And the, you know, I'll be honest, we hadn't heard that quite yeah. yet. We heard some whispers about Jalen Travis doing pretty well, actually. Um, that's a premium nugget that you're getting on the KSO show. If, but if you're subscribed to KSO, you can get it um, probably pretty regularly. Um, but yeah, Keenan Garber was the guy that Chris Kleiman wanted to kind of, I guess, compliment and praise today. First time, right? First mm-hmm. time he's done that. He'll usually talk about Seth Porter, Landry Weber, guys like that before Keenan Garber. Not today. He went to Keenan Garber. Said he had great speed. The game's starting to slow down for him. He's having a really good start to the spring. They've only had two practices and they haven't wore pads yet. So I wouldn't completely run you know for the hills and think you hit the jackpot with yeah. Keenan Garber just yet but the the early signs of spring football seems like he's maybe grasping things much quicker much easier than than what he was prior um prior to the 2020 season and you know I want to talk about the defensive side of the ball before we flip to that side is there anything in this you know he did talk some about offensive line and how they you know he loves that his up. offensive so, line yeah, yeah talk about I, I mean there, there probably isn't a whole lot of details to to share yeah it, I could just you could just tell by the way they talk they love mm-hmm. their offensive line right now it's they're really getting out a lot of what they want at the offensive line Carver Willis is coming on with Mitchum's coming on they need them to come on a little bit more to feel comfortable enough to slide Cooper BV back inside mm-hmm. and he mentioned that but they're hoping that you know Mitchum and Willis are doing well enough to the point where they can slide BB inside but right now haven't been able to fully do that they hope by the time you know snap the first ball of the mm-hmm. season um, that they'll be able to yeah but I guess the one thing he definitely ran away with you know he loves Noah Johnson at center that's your starting center again no matter what um, and he basically said Christian Duffy's won the job at right tackle as well mm-hmm. they're going to play him on the right side um, one of the things they did last year, and they did, because of everything that happened, they had to switch guys from right to left, right to left, kind of mess with some guys, maybe a mess with Duffy. So they're getting him on one side, and he's on the right side. Absolutely. So let's flip to the other side of the ball. You you asked him the question um, about the transfers coming in and such, and you know, a majority of the transfers are on that defensive side of the ball. So, so what did you think of Kleiman's comments on how he's planning, or what he thinks of the early thoughts on these transfers, you know, very early on? Yeah, he was very vague. He didn't give us a lot there. He just said he thought they were all doing well. I, I tried to see if he would point out a couple yeah. more than the other, but he really didn't. But I think that they're all going in the right direction. There is no, you know, worries or concerns on that front at this point. But, uh, I, I mean, he did mention Eric Munoz. That's a mm-hmm. guy they'll rely on a linebacker for sure. And, and they'll rely on the other ones like Horn and, and yeah. Brent and Yeast as well. But he, he did mention Munoz. So it's probably someone that he is a fan of in terms yeah. of his leadership, I think. So if you haven't heard yet, subscribe to the message board because that's where you'll get you know the best info on things that Kleiman doesn't bring up. Because there's things that Kleiman does not bring up in press conferences. Like you mentioned Jalen Travis. Um, I'm sure if Travis really stands out in, in spring ball, then he eventually will bring him up. But that's something you can get ahead of the time and kind of foresee, you know, a guy like that possibly doing good in spring. I mean, that's that's, you know, premium info that we gave. But also get to the message board, too, because there's stuff getting talked about on the defensive side of the ball that I think would be pretty important for people to, you know, want to want to learn about and discuss about. And D.Y. came in with that this week. So pretty juicy info there. That's pretty much as far as I'll go. But it did kind of get, I feel like, hinted at with Kleiman as like what he's planning on doing defensively, and he wasn't going to break any kind of news or anything today as far as that goes. No, I mean, he was asked a little bit about schematic stuff, but he said, you know, at this point, he's not really looking too far into that. He, he, he said they had to get back to the basics because of the way things kind of unraveled on them last yeah. year. Absolutely. So is there, is there anything else you want to add to this this presser podcast talking about Trumaine Carroll or Chris Kleiman's podcast or pressers from today? Uh, I think we touched on everything. I, I know they want uh, something else they brought up quite a few times. Mm-hmm. Want to practice faster, play faster, um, get the guys, you know, thinking less um, and, and just leaving it all out there. Uh, but other than that, I think we touched on everything unless you're thinking that we missed something. I, I think that's all we got for it. A good 20-minute podcast. I'll be sure to – you guys won't hear the part where I completely had a mind fart and just stopped talking for <laughs> a good 10 seconds, it felt like. But thank you guys for listening to the KSO Show. He's Derek Young. I'm Grant Flanders. We really appreciate the time you guys listening. We'll be back next time with another show. Tell your friends.